All right, folks, now that you understand short run real GDP and long run real GDP and their relationships to the business cycle and natural real GDP, what we're going to do is we're going to put both of those concepts together and we're going to look at an idea in economics called output gaps. Now, when we use this word output, we mean what we learned a few lessons ago or uh, back, I don't know, probably a few weeks ago about the idea of output. Remember, output is the amount of stuff produced in the economy. And when we say a gap, what we're talking about is a gap or a difference between the short run and the long run of real GDP. Okay? And so that's what we mean when we say output gaps. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to graph both uh, natural real GDP and the business cycle on the same graph. We've graphed them separately, but we haven't put them together. And, the, and to, to understand uh, the relationship uh, in the macro economy, it's ideally we should put them both together and, and, and then it tells us some really neat things. Uh, but let me review a couple things first. Uh, we want to review that uh, natural real GDP increases as a function over time. Only if or as long as, as long as two things are happening. First of all, as long as our stock of factors is increasing. Remember that our stock of factors is the quantity of factors of production that we have in the economy. And if the quantity of land, labor, and capital that we have in the economy is increasing over time, we're accumulating more land, more labor, and more capital, then natural real GDP will also increase over time. Because remember that natural real GDP is based on productive capacity, what we are capable of producing, what our possible output is. Also, if the productivity of our factors of production is increasing. Productivity of land, labor, and capital, or productivity of our factors is increasing. And again, I want to remind you that these two things together, this is the quality of our factors of production, and this is the quantity of our factors of production. And if the factors of production in our economy are getting larger than in number and in quality, okay, then that means that our productive capacity, those are the two things that determine our productive capacity in the economy. And as the productive capacity increases, natural real GDP, how much we can produce will increase. Okay? And so we're going to draw now a graph of real GDP over time uh, in terms of what is possible to produce. So I'm going to put time on the independent axis, on the horizontal axis, and I'm going to put real GDP on the vertical axis. And as long as the, the, our, the number of factors of production or our stock of factors is getting larger, and if the productivity, the quality of our factors of production is getting larger, then productive capacity is getting larger and larger over time. Then that means that natural real GDP is getting larger and larger over time. And that means that uh, real GDP, you know, there's no fluctuations in natural real GDP because we don't have fluctuations in what is possible to produce because it's not affected by prices. So over time, natural real GDP is going to increase. We're going to represent it as kind of a straight line and we're going to put NRGDP to represent natural real GDP over time. Okay. So this graph is representing the fact that as time moves on, as years pass, we as an economy are getting more land, labor, and capital, and the land, labor, and capital is getting better and better and better.
okay, meaning the quality of it. We're able to use it better and better and better. All right, so that is based on long run real GDP. And then also what we learned is we learned that the business cycle, which is based on short run GDP, is a pattern of fluctuating output, right? So the business cycle fluctuates in real GDP over time. So over time, real GDP fluctuates up and down, right? Based on the markets, the individual product markets in the economy. Overall, they're either increasing in quantity or on average, they're decreasing in quantity. And when all of the millions of markets out there in the economy, when they on average increase in quantity, then we have an upward fluctuation of the business cycle. That's, it. That's an economic expansion. But when overall, on average, quantity in all of those markets decreases, then we have a contraction and we have a downward fluctuation of the business cycle. Okay, And so, I'm going to erase this, we're going to say over time, the business cycle fluctuates in real GDP over time due to short run changes in supply and demand. in all of the product markets. And so here's what we're going to have. If I put the business cycle on the same graph, okay, so over time, as years pass, sometimes we'll be in an economic expansion and the business cycle will be going up, sometimes we will be in an economic contraction and the business cycle will be coming down. And between the expansions and the contractions, we'll have a peak in the business cycle and a trough in the business cycle. And this is essentially what you're going to draw and this is essentially what happens in the economy. Is we'll have the business cycle, we'll do this. Okay? We have these expansions, contractions, expansions, contractions, expansions. There's a peak, there's a uh, trough, another peak, and there's another trough, okay? And as you can see, if you look at the pattern of the business cycle as compared to natural real GDP, you can see that the business cycle kind of straddles natural real GDP, that even though the business cycle is expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting, fluctuating up and down, that's in the short term. But in the long term, look what it's doing over time. Its expansions and contractions have a general upward sloping trend so that the business cycle straddles you know, straddles, sometimes on the bottom, sometimes on the top, it straddles the natural real GDP curve as time progresses, okay? And so here's what we're going to say about the business cycle. It says that the fluctuations follow an overall increasing trend. that straddles natural real GDP. And basically, that means that the business cycle is related to productive capacity. Meaning this, as productive capacity increases, as our stock of factors increases, as the productivity of our factors increases over time, the fluctuations in the business cycle reach higher points and the low points aren't as low as the previous lower points. And that what, what, results, uh, what that ultimately results in is as time passes, the, the troughs in later time often wind up being higher than the peaks of previous years. And over time, this is what's going to happen, is that the business cycle going up and down, up and down, it's not going up and down, up and down sideways, it's actually going up and down, up and down at an increasing trend over time. And so here's what we, 
here's this straddling of the business cycle over natural real GDP. Uh, it means that sometimes the business cycle is below natural real GDP, which means that actual output is below productive capacity. And sometimes the business cycle is above natural real GDP. And this is sort of an interesting thing. I hope this brings up an interesting question in your mind. What I'm about to write here is that sometimes actual output, the actual output that we have in the markets out there is above possible output, above productive capacity. And this should bring up a question in your mind, which we are going to address in, in the next video. But here's the first thing I need you to understand before we address that question. What I need you to understand up here, I'm going to write for this labor, that's the business cycle. The, whoops. The business cycle. Another way we can think of it is that natural real GDP is real GDP in LR in the long run, and the business cycle is real GDP in SR in the short run. Okay, so here we have short run real GDP, which is the business cycle overlaying natural real GDP. And the important thing for you to notice so that we can understand these output gaps is that you can see that there are these times when natural real GDP is different than uh, the business cycle, where the business cycle is higher than natural real GDP, and there are some periods of time where the business cycle is below natural real GDP. Okay, And that's the basic idea I need you to get into your head. Uh, and what we're now going to talk about is this, is obviously there are times when actual output in the economy is less than what we could possibly produce. So we're not using all of our resources. Some of our resources, which are some of our machines, which could produce stuff, they're not being used. Some of our trucks are not being used. Some of our land resources are not being used. You know, maybe we'll have trees that are ripe for harvesting that we'll chop or that we won't chop down, or we'll chop down and we just won't use them. Or a, or food that's being grown in the fields and we'll harvest the food, but then we won't actually produce any food with it. Okay, that's what's happening when uh, the business cycle is below natural real GDP. But then there are other times in the economy when actual output in the economy is higher than our productive capacity. We are producing more than our productive capacity, more than our stock of factors, more than our productivity of factors will allow. And that should bring up a question in your mind. The question is this, is how in the world can we produce more than we're capable of producing? Well, I'm going to answer that in the next video.